And it's gonna be pretty much a single day kind of vlog so of course I woke up had some breakfast and I was doing some cleaning of my kitchen and organizing cuz I was still painting guys y'all know that that home improvement stuff was, didn't finish yeah I just didn't talk about it because I'm frustrated but I still have paint like on my hand that I'm still trying to get off but for the most part it is finished downstairs yes one issue I can't finish because I am not going to be able to do it myself. Somebody's going to have to do that. Um, for the most part, it's all about cleaning up, vacuuming, mopping, all of that good stuff. Putting stuff back on the wall, changing out outlets, that kind of stuff. I also is because it's Sunday. Sunday is where I try to finish up stuff. But I did have a pants project that I was working on. And for the most part... It was okay there is just some issues with the front uh, pleats that needs to be um, fixed because um, it's just giving baggy in the front but then I have just enough room in the waist so I'm not sure how I'm gonna fix it without it being too tight so that's a that's a pause that I had to put on those pants but I love it it has a zip in and everything it worked out so great if you look at it you you like okay it's good but when I fit it, it's like, yeah, my body is just not working well. I don't like how it looks on me in the point on my body. But that's part of sewing and part of learning. So, so I had to do a lot of notes writing on this book. So we are going to talk about book number eight of the um, Booker Prize long list: Booth and Karen Joy Forla. Now I did not know who Booth were. This is a family. This is a family that is part of the U.S. history. This is based on true story. And the author, of course, because the family was secretive, had to use her imagination when she talks about members of this family um, and what she perceived, perceived my, my, what she thought may have happened. Um, and she is. I also I think I, I appreciate where she took this book and how she carefully crafted. I did not know who these people were reading it. I just thought it was a, just a historical fiction. Now throughout this there's excerpt of a former president that's in this. And if you look at the time period we're talking the 1800s. So. I did not realize why this was a significant part of the story, but I thought it was cleverly written because each excerpt came after something happened where you can see the correlation to that, um, ex you know, that addition that was added. But as I read it, I realized more and more something was up, but I didn't know until I got to the end and I realized why. And I said, wow. I did not see that coming, which is why I suggest if you're going to read this, do not Google who the booth were. Do, unless you are a historical buff that you really know information, then even then you might still be more intrigued to see how the author wrote this. Um, because you never think of family of people in the, in the history book who have done some wrong. You never really think of how the family were and how many authors really would do that without trying to focus on one individual versus focusing on the family as a whole. And she chose to focus on the whole entire family and not one individual that is known in history. And which I thought was nice and clever and also made it a little bit more refreshing to read. Now we are talking about 
a family that moved to a farm in Maryland. The father is an actor um, who has gotten praise, but he is not consistent because he's an alcoholic. So he has praise of being a good actor, but he also have things written about him that is not so great. And he is away from his family at least nine months out of the year. So we're talking the nine months that his wife is pregnant because every time he goes home, he knock her up, he leaves, and he doesn't come back until the baby's ready to be born or just after the baby's born. And so the mother who is playing the role of women then who that is the expectation is to follow the lead of the man that they married and in this you have a mother who is um pretty much doing exactly that of having these children and there's a survival survival of the fittest when it comes to these children because some um are meet tragedy somehow they don't uh, either they they die very early or a few years and they, they die you also have the most common case of the uh, younger children having to be the caretaker of their siblings um, helping out but then also get lost somewhere along the line and you in this book in the beginning focus on Rosalie and she's the oldest daughter and ultimately raised her siblings and um, also have exposed to things that she saw from her family. Um, the behavior of her father, her father's secrets um, and hurtful things that happen and how her mother takes it and, and other people in the family who has experienced certain things. And she looked at marriage as um, one quote, marriage is a prison in which love cannot be free. And that was a powerful line in this because when I think of that time period, it's understandable where that would be her take on marriage. And I thought that was interesting. But she's also so visible but invisible at the time. The, the fly on the wall that hears everything and sees everything but no one really noticed. Um, she never got married. And in and, and that time period, if you're in your late 20s and early 30s and you've never, that just assume you will never get married because who's going to want you because you're you considered old. So that, her fate. Then she has um, a brother and he is Edwin and he is now having to take on the role of uh, babysitting his father because his father dr drunk behavior. He's also taking on the role of stepping his father foot footsteps because of the, the acting when he himself wanted to pursue higher education. He wanted education. That was his goal. But he became his father and also became his father in also the bad ways. Um, and that also gave him the responsibility of also taking care of the family um, financially and all that stuff and um, not really doing the things that he himself wanted to do because life happens. You have Asia, she is the, the sister who I think is the most delusional in terms of her bond with certain brothers that she had, certain siblings she had brought a bond with how she viewed things and this was where I always tell this um, talk about this when I think of siblings and how you can have a household of siblings and they all have a different views on how they see their childhood how they see their parents and experience that they have can be totally different although they were still all in the same household and you see that with her and how she sees her siblings even when they are wrong even when they do the ultimate you know, no, and how she sees that. Now, because this is based on truth, so she also has a book that was published about 50 years after the fact, and I am intrigued to read it because I want to know <laughs> more about what she says because based on the little bit that was talked about in the book, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I need to know. <laughs> um, then you have others. You have June, the, the, the marriage, the multi, multiple marriages. You have um, brothers who are inf infidels. You have one that is the youngest that no one ever mentioned or talk about. It was just you just know he existed. <laughs> you have one brother who became the the destroyer of the family name. The, the one in the history book that is very known if you ever know who he is. If I mentioned you would know. 
um, because he is a significant part of the U.S. history. And this book also touched on the time period of what was happening, slavery. Who for it, who was against it, who shot it from the roof, who didn't say nothing but was on the low, who had no opinions about it, who also felt it was wrong but said nothing. You get all that in a family like this, which is pretty much typical of that time. But what happened in this that I thought was interesting is how the black family that was um, talked about sometimes were, it was like, well, you're not a slave, but you can't leave. You are bound to a family, but you are not a slave. That kind of talk was like very interesting in this story um, of, of people who, um, I guess in, in essence, didn't didn't feel like they were forced slavery, but yet still had practices that were um, slavery. Um, but it's it's how it's done, where the family are bound to these black people are bound to a family, um, but because they weren't treated as harshly as the um, slaves in the South, that they should be grateful and and be okay with that kind of setup that they have. Yeah, there's there's things in this that I thought was interesting, but I think also in stories like this is necessary because oftentimes you think of people who um, that time not everybody owned slave, not every white person owned slave. However, there were a lot that didn't say anything that um, and how they view things with quite twisted as well. So I thought this was interesting how it, it was taught, um, brought up in this because there were family member, um, extended family member who were slave owners and how the story is told is you can tell that's how they really see things. Um, it's, it's very much like, huh, kind of deal, but it made sense to them. It, that's the most I could put it. <laughs> as I can put it um, but for the most part I like this I, I thought it was very good I thought she did a really good job this is my kind of historical fiction I have nothing nothing negative to say about this I was in it from the get-go like I was soaking it up from the get-go um, I just did not see where it was going in terms of how the connection was I did not see that coming because again I did not know who the person was as far as the name. Um, I just didn't pay attention in my, my history class, I guess. <laughs> when it comes to that, I don't even remember they ever mentioned that person's name at all, to be honest with you. But, yeah. Um, again, this is our... Last year was what, Fortune Man? That was based on a true story. This year is Booth based on a true story. So I guess every year the book I like um, historical fiction that has um, that's based on a true story kind of deal and this she gave this she gave this I will read this again no if ands or but I also did some googling after I was done about the the family members and what was known and some of the stuff in there is quite interesting um, but I want that book that Asia book I want to read that book because I know it's going to be a mess, but it's going to entertain me, but it's also going to give me an eye open of her thought process and how she loved her family. And this is um, also talks about still loving your family even when they did something wrong or something bad. And I thought that was interesting to, just to talk about in this book because everybody assumed because your family had done something wrong that you no longer will love them and or you see parents who still love their, their their loved one no matter how much they might consider the world a monster or the horrible person or you know that kind of deal um i thought that was was nice that that was included in the back because um people assume family member will not will just all of a sudden just not and it showed how one sibling felt like they could shun and not to just completely forget that, that that sibling existed because of how it, it changed their life and, and how they, they ultimately, they, their life becomes um, 
um, such a, took a, a very bad turn and, and, and no one wanted to be around them and associated with them and the threats and all the other stuff and just wanted to pretend that this their family man but ultimately as time goes on and you start healing from certain things you 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 remember that person and and you you love the good part of that person that you you know and you you focus on that and you could see how that happened um in this story and i thought that was interesting that she added that and and it was necessary because at the end of the day, that's still your sibling, no matter how wrong <laughs> they were, um, you know. But I could go on and on about this. There's a lot of things I did not talk about in this. There's a lot of things about marriage and children and childbirth and the, the, the agony of whether or not you're going to survive childbirth. There's a lot of things about this that I didn't talk about because it's a chunky one. But when I tell you, you like historical fiction. If you like historical fiction that has truth to it, there is facts up in here, there's things that is relatable to 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 even now. Read this. Read this. So I am going to chill and continue doing my um planning for the week. Now I am for September. I plan on doing a Tuesday video every Tuesday for September. The goal in this video is either going to be events I go to, um, random, some kind of creative journaling or art and craft or something I'm making, or some writing. I am going to try and finish one, at least one of my projects um, in September for my writing of project and I literally have a chapter and an epilogue and I'm trying to see if I can finish that but I also have a um, other one that I need to start figuring out it's not going to be an everyday writing for this month because I don't want to burn myself out before November but I want to start going back to that and share some of those process with you guys and ultimately figure out what I want to do because I keep writing these things and shoving them and I need to do some other things to kind of get better and do some more. Um, but time is such... I feel like I don't have enough time to do a lot of things. There's also other things that I, I am in the process of doing that hopefully I will share at some point. Um, but that's another issue that is going to complicate a lot of what I want to do. But it's going to benefit me. <laughs> so, um, so that's the goal. So hopefully you guys... We'll start uh, watching my Tuesday videos and of course Saturday video will still be um, reading vlog. I have two more bookers that are supposed to come this week. Hopefully I can get to them. If not, I have other books that are on my TBR that I want to read. Some more romance, that kind of deal I will read until those other books come. Again, thank you for getting me the 3K. But if you want me to add any other kind of videos, let me know leaving a comment. I will be doing a Q&A video for the questions that were asked as well as some of the other suggestion of book videos that you guys want me to do. It's coming. So thanks for watching guys and I hope you guys had a good weekend and I will see you in the next. Bye.